All right, the next demonstration is using um, an analysis services data source with direct connectivity to the on-premises analysis services um, server instance and database. So I'll open up a new Power BI desktop project and use get data. Now, while that's opening, I'll go ahead and jump over to my server and we'll get the name of this instance. I'm going to use the multi-dimensional instance. You can see the instance name uh, on my Intel Biz Dash Data uh, server is SSAS Multi. Uh, by the way, to, to be able to get that into the clipboard, uh, you can right click and go to properties um, in a relational uh, connection. I could copy this to the clipboard, but you can't do that. And so you um, can go to the connection properties here and you can copy that to the clipboard right here. So I did control C to grab that. Having chosen uh, SQL Server Analysis Services as my data source, I'm going to be prompted for the server, which of course I can paste right there now. Go ahead and skip the database. Uh, so it'll prompt me and um, it rarely makes sense to import data from analysis services. The purpose of analysis services is to manage the calculations and the hierarchies and, and to run all of the queries uh, on a server where everything is managed and will perform well. So you typically want to connect live, so we'll click OK. And now I can choose my AdventureWorks multi-dimensional database. And um, then in a multi-dimensional database, I want to choose the cube uh, or the name of the perspective, as opposed to a tabular database where you choose the, um, uh, the database and then you use the model. And so now I have all of my tables within that uh, multi-dimensional database, which um, uh, Power BI uh, translates from the dimensions and the measure groups. We could uh, show a KPI, which is uh, what uh, Analysis Services is, is really good at. Uh, here is um, my Grow Revenue KPI. So we can go ahead and add the value and my goal and use a KPI visual and then I need to trend that so it's looking for a, uh, a calendar unit. So we'll go down to the fiscal calendar and say month of year. So that should visualize that. And then we could take the um, fiscal year, put that up here and make a chart out of it so that we can slice it and we'll go back and and get the value and put that in here and put that into a column chart. So now I've got a column chart that shows me the, the fiscal yearly trend and then I've got the month by month KPI that is also showing me the monthly trend and if I choose a fiscal year then it should slice the, the KPI. Alright, so that's a decent demonstration of a multi-dimensional cube. Of course that runs very quickly. This is analysis services multi-dimensional consuming DAX queries uh, emitted by Power BI. Let's go ahead and save this and uh, we'll call it AdventureWorks multi model 2 and we'll publish that. And we'll see that that shows up as soon as it's published. It's going to ask me for a workspace to publish that to. So what we should see is that that is also extremely responsive uh, because again analysis services is doing all of the work uh, but again the data is stored on prem all of the queries are being submitted from the power bi service down on prem through the enterprise gateway and um, res only results are coming back to the cloud and not being persisted
but it's as you can see it's extremely responsive so um I, I do have an existing tabular model, and if I were to repeat the same steps and connect to that tabular model, you'd pretty much see the same uh, experience. Um, but what I want to do is show you something a little bit different. One of the reasons to use either direct query against, uh, well, any database, uh, or direct connections to analysis services is to keep all of your data in uh, the databases within your data center on premises so that you're not publishing that data to the cloud. But there's also another very good reason. And that is that if you have a very large volume of data, Power BI has some limitations and it just doesn't make sense to move incredibly large volumes into a subscription where you're either filling up your quota or you don't have um, control over the management of that data. So if we go to um, a SQL Server Data Tools project, um, here you can see that I've created a, uh, an analysis services tabular project based on that AirStats um, data. So this is the 57 million row table. Uh, and it actually could be a, a heck of a lot larger than that. Uh, we, we build tabular models with, with tens of billions of rows of data. But um, this design experience is very similar to Power BI. So I can write DAX queries, I can create calculated columns, I can create measures, uh, I define relationships between tables because it's based on um, almost identically the same technology as the modeling capabilities and calculation capabilities with in Power BI, uh, which are based on the same uh, X velocity in memory calculation and storage engine that is uh, used in analysis services. This is just server based. So if I want to create a measure here within um, my Visual Studio projects, my SSDT project, then I do much the same thing, just the experience is a little bit different. I'll go ahead and make a flight count. Syntax is slightly different, where I use a colon. So there's count rows of my table, and we'll go ahead and format that down here with a uh, as a whole number with a thousand separator now since i'm working with so much data and i have limited memory here in my development environment what i've done is i've partitioned this data and so um, here if we go to our partitions this is something that i can't do within power bi so you can see that I have one partition per year and each of those partitions is based on a T-SQL query where I'm simply saying uh, this partition includes all of the records where the year T-SQL function against this flight date date type column is 2007, is 2008, is 2009 etc and then here in my workspace database um, I would only process the partitions necessary to give me a sample set of data to work with for development purposes so I don't have to fill up my memory and wait for a lot of processing time so I can process that here and you can see that those 900,000 rows were processed very quickly um, I then deploy this to my server 